Moises from Oxford today is talking to one of the youngest professors in the University of Oxford because Professor Eleanor Stride is working at the Institute of Biomedical Engineering. Ten years ago she graduated in London at UCL and moved here to Oxford and she's working on two areas that I think of great interest to people in relation to new advances and techniques in medicine and in the way in which new technology is used in medicine. So Eleanor, let me start with the um, technique that caught my eye immediately when I looked at your website, which is that you can deliver drugs in very unusual ways. That's right. So conventional drug treatment, uh, you either take a pill, you drink a medicine or you have an injection. Yes. The problem with that is the drug is then present everywhere in the bloodstream. All over the body. Exactly. Yes. That's fine if you're treating pain uh, or if you have something that is everywhere in the body, yes. but for serious diseases such as cancer and stroke where you need extremely powerful drugs, what we'd like to be able to do is target where that drug ends up, maximize the concentration within a tumor for example, yes. and minimize uh, its exposure everywhere else so that you don't get these terrible side effects. So how do you do that? So what we do is we encapsulate the drug uh, within a tiny particle. So these particles are about a hundredth of a human hair in diameter. Wow. That deactivates the drug. They can, we then still inject them into the bloodstream, but nothing happens until we activate the particle. And right. we can do that in a number of different ways. And how do you do that then? So you've got particles all over the body. That's right. And you are going to do something to my leg, for example, or my kidney, or <laughs> how do you do that? Precisely, so depending on where the target is, our, one of our preferred methods is to use ultrasound. So most people are familiar with ultrasound for imaging. So if, if you're pregnant, that's yes. what's used to look at. We'll come back to that in a moment. But Certainly. now how does it work though in relation, you've got the drug inside a particle, you send ultrasound is very high frequency sound, isn't it? Right. We can't hear it. We can't hear it. But it does this, <laughs> right? That's precisely it. So yeah. it causes the particle to vibrate. And break. And break. Brilliant. So you get the location, the targeting, by encapsulating the drug in a tiny molecule and you then beam ultrasound at it in the right place, it breaks up and there it is. Exactly. Fantastic. And it works. And it works. And is this ru used routinely now? In so not yet. Uh, they, it's used for imaging at the moment. So uh, the right. origin of this work goes back to the late 1960s um, and it may be apocryphal but it's a very good story. Yes. Um, a radiologist was doing an examination uh, with what was then the very new technology of ultrasound yes. and he noticed when he was giving an injection that the image improved, it got brighter. Yes. And they eventually worked out it was because of these tiny particles containing gas, little bubbles, right. were reflecting the ultrasound oh. and that was what was giving... So it's bouncing off the bubbles. Exactly. But now we come to the, the use of this extraordinary technique of ultrasound because it's not an x-ray. It's not an x-ray. Right. So if you're frightened about x-rays and if ultrasound can give you a good image of what's gone wrong in the body, that's the way to go. Absolutely. Yes. So unlike x-rays which are ionizing radiation, they're very, yes. very powerful and so yes. potentially have side effects, yes. uh, ultrasound is not. It's just a pressure wave. It, it's sound, just very high frequency sound. So the risk to the patient is much, much lower. Right. It can't be used for every single imaging application. We need an, an array of techniques to do yes. medical imaging but increasingly people are trying to use it if they can because it is very convenient, very Indeed. cheap and very safe. So wh what are the problems? You say it can't be used in all cases, so where, you, where would you have difficulty? So the lung and the, s and the brain are the two main places. Um, ultrasound relies on echoes coming yes, back, it's not like sonar or, or yes. what dolphins or bats Indeed. use. Yes. Um, if you have something that's an incredibly strong reflector Yes. You just don't get enough signal back from what you're interested in. Oh, so the skull, for example, is just reflects reflection. too much sound. Yes. And there's yes. lots of gas in the lung, and yes, that also causes problems. Yes, I can see that. So those are the two areas where, it's in the end, you've got to go for x-rays. Yes, or, or, or MRI increasing or as MRI. well. So ma yeah. magnetic resonance imaging. Do you use that as well? We do, yes. yes. So we're very interested in combining the best of every yes. imaging technique yes. um, together. Now that's another uh, technique which perhaps just for the general audience we should try and explain a moment. So with that, what you're doing is relying on the fact that in a magnetic field, molecules Flip, move around, exactly. flip around. Yes. 
and you're controlling the way they flip around, aren't you? And that tells you what's there, and that gives you the image. Is it, that roughly right? That's, exa that's sorry, exactly sorry. right. Yep, you, yeah. you're flipping the molecules, yes. and from the, the oscillations that are then set up, um, depending yes. on the frequency of those oscillations and the magnitude, you can work out what materials, whether you're looking at water, whether you're looking at fat. Yes. Um, and in diseased tissue, there's a big difference from healthy tissue, and that, that's what you're imaging. So in a nutshell, your focus is on, how should we best put this, the most non-invasive methods, because in the case of giving drugs, you're avoiding the drug acting all over the body, which, as you say, with a very powerful drug, which you might need to use for a cancer, you really can't stand the rest of the body uh, having it there, which is why chemotherapy is so uh, damaging to people. So that's a huge advance, and we really have to look forward to that coming through to, to general practice. What prevents that? Is that a clinical trial and exactly. all the... Yep regulation um, so yes. obviously before we can take something into the clinic we need to be as sure as we possibly can that it's going to be safe and it's going to yes. be effective for the patients um, very excitingly at the hospital here they are just about to start a clinical trial right. that's going to be sort of the, the prototype for what we hope we're going to do in the future yes. so they're combining high intensity uh, ultrasound which is already used right. with a drug and right. we're going to see uh, if that increases the effectiveness of the drug and right. if that works, then hopefully that's going to open the door for some. So the main block now is that clinical trial and yes. ensuring that that gives a good result. Exactly. Right. Well, thank you very much, uh, Eleanor, for talking to Voices from Oxford. I've only got one final question for you. Um, you've moved extremely quickly, as I said at the beginning, from getting your PhD 10 years ago <laughs> to becoming a professor. You must work very hard. <laughs> um, I work, do work very hard, yes. yes. Um, I, I play most, very hard too. I think most academics who are successful have to actually. But what do you do when you want to relax then? Dancing. 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 Fantastic. Yes. Okay, well thank you very much for talking to Voices from Oxford. Thank you.